This past week I received two CAN boards from Big Tree Tech that I purchased a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And since I purchased them right when they came out, I'm assuming a few of you are also receiving them. So I wanted to do a quick video on how to flash the CAN boot bootloader and get it set up with Clipper, assuming you already have followed the previous instructions on setting up a CAN interface. Now, this isn't going to be a full review and pinout guide and all that type of thing. I just want to show you how to get the CAN bootloader on um, so you can get started with your printer. So before we get started, I want to point out a few different things that are on this board that are important for this process and also just in general so you don't blow up anything. Going around from the USB port, uh, right next to it we have a VUSB jumper which will be really important because this means that we can power the board using a USB cable while flashing. So that's really nice and we'll put that on in a second. Next we have a 4-pin Molex connector, a 2x2. Two two. This is the same connector as used for the Hubud and the Mellow board but the pinout is different. Uh, if you think about the top of these, the top two pins on the Hoovid board and the Mellow board, I believe, are 24 volts in ground, and the bottom are can. In this case, it's reversed. The bottom is power and the top is can. So this means if you go ahead and plug in this board to a harness you made for another type, you will be sending 24 volts to the can bus uh, or can transceiver and I doubt it will survive. So just be, be careful about that. Make sure to create a new harness if you have other CAN boards lying around. Next we have a stepper connector. We have a uh, five volt ground and three end stop pins, the same as the Hoovid. We have a BL touch connector, an I squared C connector, which we can also use for more end stops. We have a thermistor and two fans. Uh, this connector here is an RGB connector which is great for the NeoPixels and the Stealth Burner. There is a PT1000 jumper, which makes the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor a 2.2 kilo ohm, which is kind of negligible in this case. Um, unfortunately, they're both 1% uh, resistors, so that's not great, um, but not terrible. So, um, And then we have our heater connector, and then if you had the MAX31865 um, RTD amplifier, you would have your two wire or four wire connection there um, along with dip switches um, in order to pick between a PT100 or PT1000. So for getting started, all we really need in this case is to plug in uh, the jumper onto this two pin connector right next to the USB port. Um, this will allow us to power it from the, the computer. The other thing to note is right in the center here, this is the STM32 uh, chip. In my case, let's see if there's markings on the back. It says version 1.0 here, which should mean it is the STM32 F072 version. If it is a V1.1, it is the alternate version that is just getting support merged into Clipper this week. So be aware because if you flash the wrong version to the board, it will brick it. And the other thing to note here on the back is there is a boot and reset button, which is really convenient in just a few minutes we'll use those. The board again is small, the co uh, components on the back side are fairly thick, but uh, mine actually came up, came with 25 millimeter M3 standoff so I was able to mount it directly to the Stealth Burner NEMA 14 uh, with just a few millimeters of clearance. Now we're going to jump back to our SSH window that is remoted into our Raspberry Pi that we are using for our um, printer with Clipper. Um, in this case, I'm using the same one I've used in the previous few tutorials where I downloaded the latest Mainsail OS image, installed it with Raspberry Pi Imager, set up the CAN interface appropriately for whatever CAN interface you have, and right now we're going to get to the part where we go ahead and install CAN boot again and get the unit, uh, the tool headboard flashed with Clipper and that sort of thing. In this case, I also have the Mainsail OS window here. I'll just click check for updates here. It may update uh, a little bit, but I just want to make sure I'm on the latest versions of everything. So that'll take a little bit, but let's jump over to this CAN boot repository here. Again, the same one we used before. In this case, I've cleared out uh, my folder to just to show you the steps again. We just clone CAN boot. Uh, we're gonna do CD CAN boot, make menu config, and in this case, for this version 1.0 board, 
we will be using the F072 option right here. The version 1.1 board would be this G0B1 version. Um, so it looks like as far as the CAN boot bootloader, it supports both right now, but Clipper side still doesn't support the G0B1 yet. Though that pull request, I just checked it, it's ready to go. Um, Kevin's just waiting a few days just to make sure that no one has comments before merging it. So by the time you're watching this video, it may already be merged in. But V1.0 is F072, so we're going to select that. 8 megahertz crystal, um, CAN bus PB8, PB9. CAN bus speed in this case is 250,000. Um, and then we'll keep all of those um, options there. Hit Q, Y, and then make clean and make. These steps should look familiar from the previous videos. We're going to um, remote into the file browser for your Raspberry Pi. In this case, I'm using WinSCP. I'm going to go to canboot out, canboot.bin, and then click download. And there's the file. It's on my desktop now. So I'm going to close that out. And then open up STM32Q Programmer. And now we need to connect the device in DFU mode. Now that we're back to the board, again, this is the F072 version. Um, I have connected the VUSB jumper to power the board from the USB port. I'm going to take a USB-C connector, plug it in, and then plug that cable into a cable connected to my computer. And you'll see here it has powered up. To get the device in DFU mode, we need to go ahead and flip it over. I need to hold the boot pin or boot uh, button and then press the reset button and then release. There's no real indication that it is in DFU mode, but um, if we jump back to the desktop, now we can go USB and connect. And I hit reset in port one, there's one connected, so we're going to hit connect. Um, now we're connected. This is great because we don't have to use the ST link in this uh, case because the F072 allows us to go into DFU from USB. So I'm going to go to this icon, full chip erase. Again, that is an important step, just like I mentioned before. And then in this case, I'm going to go to my CAN boot bin file on my desktop and then hit start programming and then disconnect. If we go back to the top now, we can just go ahead and disconnect the board from power. Now that the bootloader has been flashed to the device, let's go ahead and disconnect this jumper from the VUSB because we don't need that anymore. Um, and if you note at the bottom here, there is a 120R. That is the termination resistor selector for the CAN bus. And so we're going to go ahead and connect that. Um, so it's connected like that. Um, and really, if you're using this with a single CAN interface and a single tool head, you'll want to put that jumper there. If you have multiple tool heads or multiple CAN devices, um, you'll want to make sure those are the end of the chain. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect this to a printer with the appropriate Molex a connector. Again, remember you cannot use the one from a Hoovud or a Mellow board because those have a different pinout. So double check, triple check before you plug it in because you don't want to damage anything. Okay, we're back to this uh, screen and we want to go ahead and make sure Clipper is updated before we flash our device. That'll just take one second. And then we can go ahead and uh, do a discover devices. So now we need to go ahead and do this python3 flash canpy.q just to get the UUID. So we're going to do cd clipper cd lib can boot and then we can copy this command and we see there's one right here so now we need to go ahead and create the file so we're going to do a make menu config oh, cd cd clipper make menu config stm32 
in this case we're doing an F072 again the GB01 is the alternate version 8 kilobyte bootloader which is correct 8 megahertz crystal CAN bus on PV8, PV9 and 250,000 for the bus speed Q, Y, make clean, make Now we're going to go ahead and go cd lib can boot. I'm just going to run this command one more time to get the UUID. And then I'm going to copy this command, except for the very end. And then I'm going to copy the UUID by right clicking, and then pasting, and then pressing enter. Here we go, it's flashing. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and copy this UUID. In this case, I'm just temporarily putting it in another printer to show you uh, how it works. Then I'll say hit save and restart. In this case, uh, yeah, it shut down uh, because my Temperature was out of range, but it's properly interfacing with it. So at this point, you're good to go. You just need to finish the configuration files. Finally, for getting set up, all of the documentation you need can be found on Big Tree Tech's GitHub page here, which has schematics and pinouts for both the v1.0 version that I have with the F072 micro, as well as the other version, the 1.1, with the G0B1 micro. Um, so again, be sure to look at the micro on your device to sure, be sure which one you have. And then um, all of the pinouts and things like that here are available for both the EBB42 and the 36 versions. Um, and at the very bottom, they even have a CAN bus configuration uh, file for the CAN 1.1. Um, you can go into each folder. In this case, I would have had uh, this one right here, EBB CAN bus v1.0 and you can use all of the pins that they have provided here and adjust you know, sensor types and things like that for your given printer. I hope you all found that helpful. Again, I just wanted to get a quick guide out um, so that you can follow along and get your big tree tech can boards running. I did skip over a few things versus some previous videos, so go back to those and reference them if you have any questions. And finally, if you have any questions, you can always ask in the chat below. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. So have a great week. Talk to you next time.